Tiro a tata, tangi o te pere, nga reira, kua te kia koe, a tona kutsi. Aroha a tu whanau. We're just waiting for a speaker because there's a certain music that needs to be played and then um, our brother Doug will get it started. So just a couple of minutes and then you'll understand why we're waiting for the speaker to play this music. Thank you. If I can just make a, a short announcement before um, the ceremony starts. Um, you'll see the farmer has got um, a doing this live stream, um, and the fly that's operating it is using what four or five G, yeah, something around that. But what he sees that would help him with his uh, um, streaming is that if we all turn off our phones. <laughs> <laughs>
tineti mihi ati kia koutou e te whāna o tāhai mai ki te nehu ngā tātou nei maraikura, tātou nei kui, tātou nei whai, tātou nei tuahine, a tātou nei wahine toki te mahi katoa. A nō reira koutou e te whāna, nā mai, ara mai, whakatau mai, a tēnā koutou, a tēnā koutou, a tēnā tātou katoa. Kara ki tīmatanga mo tēnei nehu tīmatanga, Mui e tērā, e waiata, mui e tērā te hoati te rākau. A ki te atātai nei, Minita F, moana ki te whakamoe me te tātai nei wā. Nō reira. A nei te karake e te matanga. Ko rangi nui ki runga ko papatu e nuku ki raro. Ko ngā tua Māori kei ngā kaitiaki o te ao. Whakatata mai, whakatata mai. Kia pata mai te maramatanga ko te Māori tū, ko te Māori ora, ko te Māori āngā tūpuna. Kia tūturi whakamaua, kia tēnā. Hau mi e hui e. E ho. Welcome to the city of Kirepehi. I mean that in true. It is a city. This is the city of the Hauraki Plains. Uh, before we get started with the service, just to go over a couple of things that's going to take place during the service. So when we have finished our service here, the marching team will stand just at the start of these gazebos here and do a guard of honour. Nairi. When Nairi get, gets to the gate there, there'll be a changeover of pallbearers. And Fano, please can you support Wahine Toa, whoever, to take her back up to her final resting place. Just along the way, all the way up, just tag, and that'll be fantastic. When we get up there, there'll be a karakia. We'll do the committal there. There'll be one reading and a karakia. There's no people other than that speaking up there. You can say your final words when you're throwing in a, putting in a bit of dirt or putting in a flower. You're more than welcome to come back, but please, you will be poor fitted back onto the marae. But that'll only happen when Lester comes down. And Lester won't leave there till his wife is fully covered and pretty with the flowers on top of her. 
but it's important whānau that you stay to whakanoa when we had finished this day, which means that you come back in here, you have, we get pōwhiri back into the whare, and then it's kaihākiri. And that's a special time for Lester, his children, and his mokopuna. So please, please, if you can stay. I, you will see in your um, service booklet there that there's listed the first lot of speakers. I have the list of the other speakers, and I will just call you up. Please don't be offended if you're not asked to speak, but there's no open floor today. You'll be able to catch up with your stories when you're, um, when you're having a kai. So that's all I needed to say for that. Thank you. Well, no, we'll get started now. Our dear Nairi Allen Fox. The sun rose on the 26th of March, 1957, and the sun set on the 1st of September, 2024. Precious and dearly loved wife, mum, nana, great nana, sister, auntie, niece, cousin, and dear friend to many. To lose that special person in our lives takes us on a journey of grief that we do not know how to explain. An emptiness has us emotionally drained. And sometimes we don't say the right things to people because we're at such a loss. So we, we need to remember when we're grieving that sometimes things are said that aren't really meant. But if we understand where people are at at that time, then we understand where they're coming from. And there's people here today who are in the position that Lester is now. You have lost the love of your life. You have lost a parent or grandparent. So you know exactly how they're feeling today. As you look, can look for the whole world and there's no one like the one that you have lost. But they still live on in your memories. We all know the value and the meaning of life consists in living it well. People who have been a strength and comfort to others and have worked for future generations, deriving fulfillment and satisfaction from doing so. These are the people who bring value and meaning to life. And that's what we acknowledge Nairi for today. We meet here today to honour and to pay tribute to the life of Nairi and to express our love and admiration for her. Of course, it's natural we should be sad today because in a practical sense, Nairi is no longer part of our lives. Today is also a day for memories. Today will be, mem will be remembered for many reasons, but mainly we hope that you remember it as a very special day. A special day in which you shared time with people and had your laughs or had your cries to pay your last respects, but to say a sad and fond farewell to Nairi, who we've all been privileged to have known. We have all come from different places and we are all at different stages on our journey through life. Our paths are varied, and we certainly look at life in many different ways. But today, there is one thing, one thing that we all have in common. At one point or another, and to some degree or another, our lives have been enriched by Nairi. As Nairi joins her parents, Albie and Joan, and her brother, Peter, she leaves behind her siblings, Audrey, David and Vicky and their family. Nairi, today is the hardest day for the love of your life for Lester, your tamariki Liana and Andy, Rach and Arama, Steph and Andrea, your mokopuna Bailey, Kayla, Alia, Mason, Jordan, Nova, Manaho, Anatia and your mokotuarua, Zaley. Because today, they lay you in your final resting place. And it's not going to be easy for your baby. But we as a father will do the best to make sure that you get the send-off that you deserve, my dear. Because who else gets buried when the Māori King gets buried? <laughs> Nairi does. 
And this morning, people, honestly, the sky was clear before six o'clock this morning. Usually in Kitapihi, it's very foggy. Today it was clear. And before she was closed this morning, the sun shone in right onto her face. So those are the things that we have to remember when we send her off. Today we give thanks to a, for a very special person who has made such a major contribution to the good qualities of our lives and who have done their best to gently polish away our heartache. Please thank her for the endless hours of time she spent being very courageous and strong for her battle she knew she was never going to win. Thank her for always being there for us, for the person we knew we could turn to when we needed comfort, encouragement, or just a hug. Thank her for making a home for us where we could feel safe, where we felt belonged. But most of all, please thank her for her unconditional love, for loving us no matter what, and for frequently showing love in ways that made us feel valued and cherished. We love her, we admire her, we respect her, and we wish that we could give back to her the many good things that she gave to us. Nā mihi nui kia koutou. Finally, our first speakers are her three daughters, and they will be followed by her fourth family. Kina 
My name is Liana, Nori's eldest daughter. My sisters and I feel nothing but pride as we stand here today to honour our beautiful mum, Mummy, to Steph. To see so many of you here is no surprise to us, as we know just how special she was to many of you. Nori Ellen Fulton was born on the 26th of March 1957 in Huntley. She was taken from us much too soon on Sunday the 1st of September 2024. There is so much that happened between those two dates and there is simply no way I can possibly reiterate the life mum led in a single speech. So I'll talk about some special moments my, her, my mum had in her life. Nairi was the second child of Albie and Joan Fulton, sister to Audrey, David, Peter and Vicky. Many of mum's earlier years were spent in and around Huntley, Coromandel and Hauraki. Although times weren't always easy and often a struggle, she had many wonderful memories from her childhood. Memories of her mum, grandma, and how she loved Christmas time and all the special traditions she had, which to this day, mum still held with us. Memories of her dad, granddad, a hard man who could be tough on his kids, but how they bonded through her swimming and how he would coach her to be able to go on and be a champion New Zealand age group swimmer. She reminded us often, she would swim 1.5 miles every morning and every night. And two of her swimming records remained for over 20 years at Hauraki Plains College. When mum finished school, she went on to teachers college and she made some lifelong friendships there. And as the years passed, all of their children and my sisters and I also became close friends. Although not always in the classroom, Mum found other jobs she could use her teaching skills. She helped many young people in the community through her work at Maranga Mai and Vitao. Her love of sports and in particular Touch then saw her in roles with Touch New Zealand and Touch Canterbury, which she loved. She was a staunch advocate for the game and what it could do for our youth. Later, when moving to Australia, she struggled to find her place. But after some help from Auntie Chrissy, she became a logistics expert at moving meat. <laughs> Somewhere amongst all that, Mum also managed to meet the love of her life, our dear Esther. Many of you already know the story of how she apparently had to chase him because he was so shy. <laughs> Their first official date was the Cashman Ford Ball. Lester and Nairi went on to marry on the 20th of January 1979, and they have been best friends ever since. They went on to have their children, us girls, myself, Rachel and Stephanie, Stephen. She was a 100% all-in mum. She was a play centre mum and went on to represent her area at national level. She was a school board mum. She was a team manager mum. Whatever we decided we wanted to do, she was a make it happen mum. As we grew up and found our own partners, she welcomed them into our home with open arms. Adama, Ange and Andy, she always treated them as their own. Later, as we all had our own children, she took on her most prized role yet of being their man. Bailey came first, and her and Dad both supported Rachel early on in bringing him up. Each muko that arrived after that, Mum found a way to connect and bond with each of them with their own individual special love language. Unfortunately, Mum never got to touch her newest great muko, Zaylee. But Baba is here with her now, and as everyone knows, she has made herself very well heard these last few days. So we know she has her hand very strong track. Mum lived life to the fullest and wasn't afraid to show the world who she was. The wonderful thing about Mum was that she didn't live just for herself. Helping others is what brought her the most joy. 
it will come as no surprise that some of her greatest achievements were about helping others. Creating Kiri Cobra's Touch Club, which involved bringing the whole Kitapihi community together and creating a co-papa where husbands, wives and their children could play together, travel together, achieve success and lifelong friendship. This led on to what Mum considered to be one of her greatest achievements, winning the Youth Touch World Cup in 20, 2005, a campaign she worked tirelessly on for years. Lastly, her final project before she left us all was the completion of our Whareikai, Tutu Hawaru. Mum was a driving force in making this happen, something she was still able to achieve even as her illness was taking over. Friendships meant a lot to Mum, and none more so than the group of ladies she marched with. I remember well when she told Rachel, Steph and I that they had formed a marching group. We thought it was the biggest joke. <laughs> but soon realised how significant that group of women would become to my mother, and we thank you ladies so much for that. None of us were to see what lay ahead for our poor mum. I was there that day with mum, as the doctor explained that she had been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease in 2017. At the time, her and dad were living in Australia, and that diagnosis changed the direction of her and dad's life. The years that followed and her gradual deterioration was hard for us as a family. To see someone become a prisoner in her own body was heartbreaking. As a wider whanau, we supported our mum right to the end, and our beautiful father, who loved our mum as hard as any one person can love another. My mum wrote a book that we found, <laughs> with Steph put together, and her greatest wish in there was not to have Parkinson's anymore. So on Sunday, she finally got her wish and she can rest easy. To close, I want to thank you all once again for being here today as we prepare to say goodbye to our mum. We want to say a special thank you to our Kitapi Fano and Ringawira who worked tirelessly behind the scenes for us these past few days. Uncle Dougie, Auntie Baba, Nanny Janie, and Auntie Mo for supporting and guiding us throughout this journey. Finally, from our whānau, Dad, Lester, Rachel, Arama, Bailey, Kiani, Kayla, Aaliyah, Jordan, Zaley, Steph, Ange, Manaho, Anatia, Andy, Mason, Nova, and myself. When you remember our mum, remember her big laugh and bright smile. Goodbye, mum. And we will love and cherish you always. Never forget how much I love you. As you grow older, you will face many challenges in life. Just do your best. Life isn't about waiting for the storm to pass. It's about learning to dance in the rain. Every day may not be good, but find something good in every day. Laugh, love, and live. Follow your dreams. Believe in yourself. You are strong, brave, and determined. 
can overcome any obstacle that comes your way. I am proud of you and I know that you will go far in life. I will watch over you every day and always remember you. Nan loves you.
to start our next um, tribute, we will start with Logan, and then that'll be followed by Lenny. Thank you. Uh, kia ora whanau. I'm um, Logan, um, Mani Nari's uh, favourite niece or nephew or nephew. Uh, <laughs> just so you guys are very bad out there. Um, I'm Audrey's uh, son. Um, and yeah, the Mani Nari's been a huge part of our lives. As you know, and with all you guys here, we can see that. Um, Mum, Auntie Vicky and Uncle David have uh, put a bit of stuff together. Um, and then I got told, volunteered to come up and sit. So here I am. Um, Ari knows the being the second child of a family of five, um, but as we all probably here can attest to, she was always the boss. Uh, the family usually were happy to fall in line and comply with her decisions and directions. She was strong-willed, like her father, Albie, but also had her mother, Joan's soft side. Uh, she was the chief organiser and coordinator of all the family activities and parties, was always delegated as speaker when required for family occasions, and the family always came very, very wary when she started with, I've just been thinking. <laughs> Grandma and Grandad always encouraged their children to be actively involved in any endeavours or interests in their lives which is why Auntie Nore has never been a person to stand on the sidelines, but has taken on any role to help any organisation, community group, sports team, and any other interests that anyone asked her to be involved in. Auntie Nore and Uncle Lester were always available when needed, for whatever reason, and when they moved away from Kirape, she always said she was only a plane ride away. And Grandad said that she must have had shares in Air New Zealand. Um, but he was always probably the happiest to see her when she did come home. Um, we know Aunty Nara and Uncle Peter, oh, yeah, we know Aunty Nara and Uncle Peter are now catching up uh, and putting all the rights to the world, and they're going to be watching over us. Over us. Um, we're going to miss you, Ani, Nori. We're going to miss you a lot, um, especially my mum. Uh, Audrey um, is there. It will leave a very large hole in her life. Uh, they were always very close and had a special bond and especially over the last seven or eight years since she was diagnosed with Parkinson's. Uh, rest now, Auntie Nore, um, and know that we're going to make sure that we look after Uncle Lester, the girls, and all your mokos. Thank you. Aroha. He Can I go to the 
recorded the whole time here. Um, I'm here on behalf of the uh, Joe Heidi Fox Party, the John the Hill uh, Fulton, uh, Fulton Party. Um, I think we've known each other for years, mum and dad, uh, Jane and uh, Albert. We used to call uh, Jane Ma. She was our Ma. Uh, years ago, uh, we all sort of brought up together with the Fultons in Kaihiri and uh, Asi and Kirapi. And um, we went to school together, we played sports together. Um, later on, as we were playing rugby, uh, there was this girl, she kept chasing my brother. <laughs> and I used to say to Lester, I said, hey, here's this girl, she keeps chasing you, she wants to know where you are. And Lester being Lester, you know, she'll be on. <laughs> and it took a number of years before uh, we actually got together. Now, I haven't been much, uh, here much around Kirapi here, I'm uh, living somewhere else, but uh, the partner is still living here. Um, Audrey, um, and the uh, rest of the partner, on behalf of the Fox partner, um, we welcomed you into our partner years ago. <laughs> See the legacy that she has left She's sitting over here today. I think that's all that we can say, and uh, yeah, make sure you're the middle brother, I'm not the oldest brother. <laughs> so, uh, kia ora. thank you very much.
Our next speaker is going to be a very dear friend of hers and also a, a companion of hers in the marching team. Thanks, Sugar. What a beautiful day for my dear, dear friend. So, I know you're thinking, marching. Hmm. No little skirts, no marching boots, no top hats, okay? Long pants, shirts, that's our, that's our dress wear. So, in 1998, our marching team, that's us, was created. 26 years later, we are still going strong. Each member was selected for their individual qualities. Hers, of course, was their planning and organisation skills. But the thing about this, when Nori joined this team, she didn't create it, she didn't run around and organise things. She could turn up and enjoy the whole weekend without bothering to try and plan, you know, buses, planes, passports, all those kind of things. She could come and actually enjoy her time. And that's what our marching team is all about. Leisure marching motto is fun, fitness, friendship. And our team, it seemed to be fun, friendship, and more fun. We traveled to most places throughout New Zealand to support other marching teams. We would go away for maybe three days to march for two minutes. The other things, what happens on tour stays on tour. <laughs> when Nori returned to Hauraki from Christchurch, due to her illness getting worse, she was still a part of the team. She would attend trainings. She would attend our day that we had once every two years, and she would sit and maybe do the raffle table. We still involved her. She still supported us in our own club day. When Nori was admitted to Ohingamuri House as her sickness got worse, she was still a part of us. We would go away for the weekend. I would visit her on Tuesdays, that was our day together, and I would show her our video and our display that we had done in that weekend. We went away for our 25th anniversary last year, and she was in our minds as usual. So we knew Nairi used to like knitting, crocheting, apart from all the organisation. She did do some nanny stuff. So we thought we'd do this crocheting and knitting that none of us could do. So thank goodness we had her sister Audrey and our lovely Miss Gwenny to teach us. Now we thought that this activity would probably take us a couple of hours. Well, excuse me, but it took all bloody day. And all we had to do was do a square to about that size. Wow, the swearing that was going on, and the dog, when are we gonna have a beer? We need a drink, we need some food. But eventually we got it done, and our lovely Miss Gwenny, who is our treasurer, she put all those squares together and made a blanket for Nairi and was presented to her up at her Hunamudi house. Nairi always had that blanket on her bed, and it now lays in her coffin down by her feet. So we will still always be with Nari. And every time we go away for our weekends to march, she will always be with us. So thank you all for coming for whatever reason, because she touched so many people's hearts, whether she was involved or whether she and our team just turned up and did her thing. Pura Koto. Hey, Snorri. Yeah. Uh, we're singing Snorri. We're singing Chew. <laughs> 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 Take my sunshine away. 
Wow. Our next speaker is Maya. Kirikoto Kato, a Mihiana, Kirikoto Kato, Itinera, and Mihiana Kiri, just to find our Nari. Uh, hello, everyone. Can't comprehend what you must all be going through uh, today, and uh, my heart, like everyone else, is here, breaks for you all. With I just want to thank you for the privilege of speaking on this occasion for mum, man, and your wife, Wes. Um, my introduction to Nairi was probably the same as a thousand other kids from around the Motu, in terms of Lester just randomly bringing a kid home. And I remember uh, walking inside the house, and I didn't realise it at the time, I was only 11, and I seen Nairi look at me, and I, now I know what the look was. Oh, this is the next one. <laughs> and uh, it all came about, I ended up being the Kerry Conference Touch Team mascot. So Lester and Nairi would dress me up in my copper shorts, which would go down to my ankles, and my shirt, which was five times too big, which no shirt ever is these days, unfortunately. <laughs> and I was uh, part of the Kerry Coppers family at Jeet, and I think I was cool. Um, my role was carry the ball bag to the field and back to Lester's car, and that was it. But tell you what, every time they won a tournament, it was because of me, I can guarantee that. <laughs> um, it was funny, the Kerry kids didn't really like me too much. I'm not sure much has changed there. <laughs> Uh, they used to say I was the golden child, and I'd be like, what? And they're like, yeah, you're the golden child. Your photo's up there with the other three kids' photos in their house. And I was like, no, nah, I'm not a golden child. You should just host it these and annoy her. That's basically what I mean. And uh, other of Lester's and Irish friends would uh, say that I was the son they never had, and I, that was the biggest funny joke to me, because um, back there being 11 and all those years, well, I was a sookie compared to the girls, and they could all beat me up, and unfortunately <laughs> nothing's changed. So... Uh, but what an incredible blessing it was back then, and when I look over my life in terms of the impact that it had by having um, two such incredible people. And it, it's quite funny, I think we often think of Lester as being this man of heart, which he 100% is. But when you unpack what Nori did, so was she, but just in a very different way. And uh, over the last week I've been uh, just reflecting on uh, what I know of Nori and the things she's done. And what just clearly popped out to me was how selfless a woman she was. In terms of she would always see a problem, and instead of just seeing it walking past it, she'd go do something about it. You talk to the Kerry kids here, she'd be the one who picked them up from parties, the one who'd organised Rainbow's end trips, the one who'd organised touch club. Not the touch team, a touch club. Nari doesn't do anything small. She's going to save 10, it'll be 10,000, not just 10. And she did a touch club, and that helped their whanos. And ultimately, by helping their whanau at home, they helped their kids at home too. And that's who she was. But... She, I don't think she ever got the pats on the back she deserved because to be that person, you have to have conversations most of us don't and you have to fight battles that most of us don't want to. And that's what she did. And that's why often I, I used to hear things like, oh, don't get on her wrong side. And that's correct. Do not get on her wrong side. But you only be on her wrong side if you're in the way of her solving the problem and the need that she had. And that's who she was. And that's why she is one of the most uh, special ladies. There's incredible people from this town and she's one of them in terms of the impact that she had on Kira Pihi, not her family, not the kids, friends of her kids, but the whole community and every community she's gone to. And so uh, that was the blessing that uh, I, I had from Nairi and uh, I just wanted to come and say uh, what an amazing woman you were and you are and always will be and all of our memories, Nairi. And uh, I know your main worry will not be yourself, uh, it'll be Lester. And uh, don't worry about Lester, 
Everyone here's got them. Everyone's here. It, it, that's another thing too. I bet you most of us here today are not people here because we know Wester or Nairi, but they've genuinely impacted our lives or your kids' lives. And, and that's a real change, I guess, from a lot of times when we're at Tangi. Um, but we got Wes Nairi, we got the kids and everyone else. Um, Wester works at our school, so I've doubled his hours, so he doesn't get the time to uh, doesn't get the time to think about uh, anything, and I've halved his pay so he can be learned about something else. Um, but all the love to you all. Uh, great to know that she's peaceful now. And thank you all. <laughs> Our next two speakers are going to speak on behalf of Touch New Zealand. Um, can I please ask Joe and Pete to come forward? Namahi. Jarafana Namahi Nuitia Koto. Got the call up about half an hour ago, so got no bit of paper, got no notes, got no nothing, but that's kind of how it is with us. Um, sort of formally, my role here is to, um, I guess, to represent and uh, the couple of hundred thousand people a year that play touch every year, um, and uh, you know, part of our sport. But uh, really, I'm here just on behalf of myself, Linda, my Tamaniki, and my Moko to uh, pay our respects and to be here to support you all, because uh, I think that's really all we can do. Um, I guess at the end of the day, we get to wear this badge. Boys, you've got it as well because of the people that came before us. You know, we stand on the shoulders of the people that came before us. They've created the opportunity, and Nairi was one of those people. I uh, first got to know Nairi many, many years ago, when I was a pretty poor coach, coaching touch age group teams, coming to tournaments that she was part of running, and doing what I was told when I was told to do it, and as many times as I was told to do it. So, no different to anyone else. Um, <coughs> Quietly confident that despite the lofty heights, some think that I've risen to that, that would still be the case now if she was here talking to me. So that's all good. Um, it's, at the end of the day, it's always difficult when you come to these things. This is one of the hardest parts of my job when we do it far too often of late. You know, recently, Paula Wanakuri and others that have passed away. Um, but I'm also incredibly honored to stand here to represent our sport, to represent our people, in front of those that have been involved for many, many years. Um, obviously, the whole family has been very involved. Lester was the coaching manager when I was, as I said, a very poor coach. Um, Diana captained the Open Women's team for many, many years and was part of the uh, whole structure of the sport. Um, and Nairi, I think she came through just about any number of jobs at the organisation as she made her way through. Uh, heavily involved in the junior sector, heavily involved in regional development. You know, regions, again, come back to where you come from. Um, ran the organisation for a period of time, right through to the top. Um, and again, they all did an amazing job and allowed us to be here today, um, both to be here as representatives of sport, but also to be here to honour her and, and her whanau. Um, I don't have any great stories, other than in 2005 in Helena at the second Youth Touch World Cup, we played Australia, we ended up in a three all draw, six teams, we won three grades, they won three grades. So Nori stole the cup and smuggled it back to New Zealand. <laughs> and we ended up with it. Um, it's still in the cupboard somewhere, we've never given it back. So uh, aside from that, I'm going to ask Peter if you'll come forward. Um, he's known Nori for a lot longer than I have. Kia ora whanau. Uh, kia ora whanau. my name's uh, Peter McIntyre. I'm not the Pete that's supposed to be talking. But um, I just thought it was it would be wrong if I didn't. Uh, firstly, uh, a little bit of my story. Uh, I started as a young coach at that Youth World Cup, or the year before it, and um, Lester gave me the job, and Nairi was pretty much 
my my mum, like everyone else's mum, she was a very firm lady. But once the platform was laid, you knew where you were. So that that was that was how how it was done, and it was it was beautiful. Just to you, Lister, I just want to say thank you, thank you for what you've done for me and my whanau, um and your beautiful wife. I did say to Lee as I went up there, I, I wouldn't miss this for the world. And what I meant by that is just paying tribute to what your whanau has done for my whanau. And to you, Lee, you coached my daughter and she had a rough ride and you looked after her and, and you put her in a position where she could show her traits and that was trust from you. So I just want to thank you personally. Uh, my mum always used to say is your children are a reflection of their parents and, uh, you know, you should be very proud uh, of mother and father, uh, Nairi and Les, you've done an amazing job with your kids. So just personally from me, it's a personal thank you to you. You know, I wouldn't be in the position I was in now uh, if it wasn't for you and for what you've done for me. No doubt there's many a story out there. Um, I'm just lucky enough I can stand here and, and say thank you. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart and, and so do my children. Kia ora. ファクトウィロティティアラキ。ハイレハイレハイレ。ハイレキティペティラニチア。ハイレキトカイナチュチュ。ファクトファンダトニ。ファクトハキアマヤキアマノウヌ。ファクトカイコレロ。エムヒア
not just their family and their own kids, but the community. So uh, yeah, I want to say thank you to, to Laurie and, uh, and to Lester. We, I had more to do with Lester, to be fair, because he was my boss. He was the coaching director. I was one of the coaches. And so we had a lot more to do with each other. Very quiet man. But uh, they were tight. They, they were tight. And um, yeah, it, was, it was a great time for me because I I'd learned some good stuff off him. Old school stuff. Respect, manners. Can we hear the no? I can put it in a meter, go to a cup tour. Then I can take ten, I can take your own, you might have tattoo. Etoluna mea, Gamea, Kiana, Our next speaker is Miss Ellie, please. Kia ora koutou. For those that don't know me, I'm Ellie Priest, Nee Rita, and have been given the privilege to speak on behalf of the Kitapihi nieces and nephews. Recently, someone asked me how I was related to Auntie Nairi, and I quickly answered, I'm one of the Ke I'm from Kerry, and everyone is your auntie and uncle. That was enough said. As so many have already paid tribute to, Auntie Nairi was a remarkable individual who has touched the lives of many in our community. It is clear Auntie Nairi had a big heart. She has been guiding like always ready with and helping with helping hands and a listening ear. Whether organising community events, lending her expertise, or simply being present in times of need, Auntie Nairi has shown us a true meaning of compassion and dedication. My sister Lisa, who's currently in Singapore, wasn't able to be here today, so she asked me to read the following. They say actions speak louder than words, and that perfectly describes Auntie Nairi. She was a doer, not a talker. Auntie Nairi was a heartbeat of our community, always ready with a helping hand and a driving force behind so many of the events and moments that brought us together. She just didn't talk about making things happen, she made them happen. I'll be forever grateful to have grown up in a community like Kitapihi, where Auntie Nairi's contributions were fully paramount. Her influence shaped not just our Kiri whanau, but the people but the people will become wherever we are in the world. Though she was a devoted mum and man, she was also auntie to many of us. Auntie Nairi, Nairi quietly supported us from the sidelines, physically and literally, sorry, my words, always there, and she was always dependable. Auntie Nairi showed us that true influence comes from action, from stepping up when it counts, and being there for others. Auntie Nairi, thank you. Thank you for the countless sleepovers. Thank you for the endless running around and the late night pickups. Thank you for organising all of us and making sure we knew where we had to be. Thank you for always offering your words of encouragement. Thank you for your support you have always given us in our times of need. Auntie Nairi, your efforts have not gone unnoticed. Aroha nui, security. Bye. 
To all the speakers who have spoken today, thank you very much for sharing and paying such an honourable tribute to this beautiful lady. What can you say? To be very humbled about the way you've spoken about her. But it's nice for you to share that so that Lisa, his children and his mokopuna truly understand the impact that this special lady had on your life. And so how do you continue that? Don't wait till someone's in this position before you tell them that you love them. She always made sure everybody knew what she felt about them. So you need to continue to do that. It doesn't cost you anything to tell someone that you love them. It doesn't cost you anything to be kind to another person. For all the mahi that she's done, for all the memories that you have, and for whatever input that you had in your and for her life, and for Lester and their family, thank you. For all the speakers that have spoken, some of you have heard this first before, and you're going to hear it again today. But no, this is to acknowledge you, everything that you've done, everything that you put your hand to to make it successful. Life is like a journey on a train, with its stations, with changes of routes, and even with accidents. At birth, we boarded the train, and we met our parents, and we believe they will always travel on our side. <coughs> However, at some station, our parents will step down from the train, leaving us on this journey alone. As time goes by, other people will board the train, and they will be very significant in your life. They could be your siblings. They could be your friends. They could be your children. And they could even be the love of your life. Many will step down and leave a permanent vacuum. Others will go so unnoticed that we didn't even realise that they vacated their seats. This train ride will be full of joy, sorrow, fantasy, expectations, hellos, goodbyes and farewells. Success consists of having a good relationship with all the passengers, always require, require, requiring that we give the best of ourselves. Because the mystery is to everyone, we do not know at which station we ourselves will step down. So we must live in the best way. We need to remember to love, to forgive, and offer the best of who we are. It is important to do this because when the time comes for us to step down and leave our seat empty, we should leave behind beautiful memories for those who will continue to travel on the train of life without us. That's you, Nori. That is definitely you. Nori would wish you all a joyful journey for the coming years on your train of life. Remember to reap success, give lots of love, and be happy. But most importantly, be thankful for the journey. Nairi, on behalf of everybody here today, thank you for being a passenger on our train.
Nga mihi nui te akoutou. O ki te pihi, we're going to do e te atua, so haramai whānau. Even if you're not from Peter Pihi and you know the way, so you can still come up. to have Whareki of Whakamutunga and the Paul Bearers going to acknowledge, take no to her Cobra flag and then bring her back here and then that time the marching ladies can get on either side please and then <coughs> we'll begin the hikoi up to the Urupa. Please don't feel shy if you've been come to carry Noria. And the babies who are going to have the rainbow, the rainbow twirlies, you just go down from the march, mate. Right. Thank you. Tēnā nō tātou, tēnā mā tā waka, i tau mai ki te aha. Hara, hara mai ki te repē tō tātou marai, must remember, Welcome to the capital of Hauraki. <laughs> Welcome to the capital. There may be metropolis and other centres, and they, the Pitu of the Ao, the centre of the world here. Welcome. Welcome to the capital, Kirapi. Noreira, Hero Rangatinama, Tene Mato Kaino Atsinaika, 
tō tātou nei matua nei te rangi. Nō reira he whakāro nui a ki tō tātou nei kīngi o te tau te whero whero te tuwe whetu. E noho mai rā, rā ki tōna oki, wāhi oki oki, ki te mauna tapu ki taupiri, te takoto ai, ka inga wai inga nui i o rātou mā i o nga tīpuna o nga kīngi tanga. Rātau ki a rātau, pērā, tō tātau nei mā rei kūra, e tīra hanei, i raro te mahau, tō tātau nei whare, te iti o hauraki. Our thoughts also are with the families of Tainui Waka, as they ascend to their mountain of Taupiri to lay, the, lay to rest. Tō tātou kīngi, kīngi tū heitia. Nō reira, kia koe, tō tātou nei mā rei kura. Your journey be travelled with the king. And as I said, in the last two, three days, those pearly gates will be wide open. And all our whānau, all our whānau that have gone before you will await your arrival. Nō reira, E rauranga tirama, all those that are here today, on behalf of our whānau, the whānau, Uncle Lester, his children, Mokupuna, Auntie Nairi, and our Fulton whānau. Thank you once, thank you twice for being here. There's a question that is often asked when a loved one has passed. What can I do? What can I do? You by, you by being here today, your presence here today to farewell our maraikura, to support our whānau in time of grief, means more than words can express. Nō reira, inga rauranga tirama, to you all, te nā koutou, te nā koutou, kauri e tō rohea ngā kōrua, e whakapoto, e kakau, e paipa, e nare, kauri te kumare e kōrero no tō nā ke reka. Tō tātou nei kōrea, e nā kaumātua, Hei runga tō tātai marae. Hei hāpai tō tātai reo rangatira. A kawa nei, a tikawa nei. Ko tau, te nā ko tau. Me i noi tata. E hūno rehe koro uri a he mau nā runo. He wakaro pai ki nā tāna takatoa. Āmen. He mea nui rawa te i noi. Hei maramatana ki te ao. Hei arahi. Hei arataki. Kia tātou, tō tātou nei mā reikura, ki tua te ara. Haere, ki tōna wāhi oki oki, kai rungara. E ki mīno nei te maramatana, ki apu o wai e ngā wākato, ka huri au ki a koe te areki, ko waka moimeti, koro uria ki tō i noa tapu. Āmen. Prayer. Prayer is a song we all can sing, a light the blind can see. Prayer is a gift the poor can bring, however poor they be. Prayer is a star that lights the way to those, our whānau, who are in need. And when our hearts lay down to pray, Tō tātou nei matua nei te rani, tō tātou nei kaihana, we'll hear your prayer. Mai e, mai e, mai e te tipua, mai e te tawhito, mai e te kāhui o ngā riki, mai e tā whiwiki ngā tua, ko rangi nui e tū i hone ko papatua nuku e takoto nei.
Koi pare ngā kino te wā. Koi pare ngā kino te wā, koi pare ngā poke e te wā. Ne whakawā te a te ara takaitū wa tāne whakaperepere. Tēnei te pau o tupu a nuku. Tēnei te pau o tupu a rangi. Ka whakamau ki uta, ka whakamau ki tāe. Tūturu whakamau a tia tēnā. Hau e, hui e. Tātou ka tōtō tātou nei karekia. Kia tau. Kia tau. Ki a tātou katoa, te atawhai o tō tātou ariki, ai i ukaraiti. Me te aroha o te atua, me te whipina tahitana, ki te wairu a tapu, hāke, 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 āmen. Kia ora tātou.
Get up there and then I'll be turning around and coming back again. 